Check in now with Chief Meteorologist Holden LaCroix, who's uh, obviously tracking this mm -hmm. next coming storm, the weather we're having, but that was a monster. Yeah, and luckily for us, uh, we kind of dodged a bullet from yeah. that, but unfortunately for our friends to the north, that was not the case. But we still are dealing with the same area of low pressure offshore, and that is key. If this guy was any further inland, we would have been dealing with a complete different story, and this was expected. We uh, talked about this earlier this week, that most of the winds were going to remain offshore, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, the strongest winds were down towards areas of Port Orford. So very active map in front of us right now. So we had the bomb cyclone. What is that? Well, all it is is an intensifying area of low pressure, and we get these every single year. In fact, last year we had two bomb cyclones off the Oregon coast. What makes or breaks these uh, is if uh, they're closer to the Oregon coast. Whenever they're uh, anywhere within 150 miles from the Oregon coast, that's when we start to see a lot of damage. Luckily, it was offshore, but unfortunately, that wind field did reach some of the higher terrain across areas of western Washington. And what causes a bomb cyclone? Well, all it is is some incredibly cold air rushing in from the North Pole, overtaking some warm air. That creates a strong pressure gradient, and pressure gradient means stronger winds. Just like if you puncture a hole in your tire, that creates a wind flow. That's exactly what we saw, and it was a tight pressure gradient off the Oregon coast. Luckily, all we see is rain creeping toward the north. This is an atmospheric river that will continue to bring rainfall overnight tonight. And yes, Matt, a bomb cyclone and an atmospheric river is not new terms. We see this every year. All right, Holden, thanks for the explanation.